we've got some big news to discuss, and that is in the world of religion and politics. And folks, if you think there was no politics at the Vatican, think again. That's what it was all about this past Wednesday, when all of a sudden, Wednesday afternoon, 3 o'clock East Coast time, the white smoke started emanating from the chimney above the Sistine Chapel, the white smoke signaling that on the fifth ballot, the conclave of, Card of cardinals had selected a new pope. And then an hour later, he suddenly emerged on the balcony overlooking St. Peter's Square. His name is Jorge Bogoglio. He is taking the name as Pope Francis. He's the Archbishop of Buenos Aires in Argentina. He's described as a very humble man, somebody who was not seeking this out, but somebody who nonetheless got uh, the second greatest number of votes in the last conclave when they chose Cardinal Ratzinger to be the new pope, taking the name Pope Benedict. Daniel Marins, your reaction to Pope Francis? Well, David, certainly I'm very pleased that the Catholic Church is, Church is finally recognizing its growing constituencies, and that is the fact is, fact of the matter is that Latin America, from whence Jorge Mario Bergoglio came, uh, now makes up over 40% of the entire world's Catholic population, and yet this is the first pope in 1,200 years not to come for Europe. So surely that's a milestone, and I congratulate all Catholics on that. And it, another interesting point, David, that while... Jorge Bergoglio, or as he is now known, Pope Francis, is sort of within that conservative traditional mold, continues to maintain the traditional Catholic stance on gay marriage, the role of women, and the permissibility of birth control, among other things. He, and I, I, gay marriage, I should say homosexuality altogether, he has shown a sympathy for the poor and an involvement and an outreach to the poor. Apparently, he did reject some of the uh, luxurious amenities that were available to him as Cardinal of Buenos Aires. He did not, uh, he was not taken around in a show, by a chauffeur. He did not have his own personal cook. He preferred to do those things on his own. And I think that that does say something. And if we can have a pope that is more vocal on sort of these economic issues and these issues of social justice, that'll certainly, I think, also be a step forward for the, uh, the pontiff. So much symbolism with this uh, this particular choice. And again, as you pointed out, described as a very humble man, somebody who did not seek any of this out and like to sit in the back pews of the meetings with the Cardinals. Daniel, there's also some controversy, though, involving the Catholic Church and the brutality of the Argentinian government in the late 1970s. Explain very briefly what that's about and the questions about um, about this man. Well, David, from 1976 to 1982, the dirty war in Argentina, uh, in which the right-wing Argentinian military junta sort of really brutalized the population, killing and disappearing as many as 30,000 people. There is some question as to whether uh, this cardinal allowed two Jesuit priests under his watch to be imprisoned and tortured by that regime. He counters and said that, in fact, there was nothing in his control that he could do, and he tried all used all his power to get them saved and eventually did, and in fact, on many other instances, also helped reduce violence and sort of fight the regime's brutality. So interesting, though, that in the hours after his selection, I mean, there was a, there were stories all over the place about what was going on in Argentina in the late 1970s and the questions about the role of the Catholic Church and whether or not uh, this uh, cardinal who, I mean, look, he's been in Argentina for many years, and, and Jorge, whether this... Uh, Bergoglio had done enough, or whether he was simply being pragmatic, or whether he had he should have done more to actually challenge the Argentinian government uh, back in the late 1970s. So it's a it's a fascinating question, and I think there's probably more that's uh, that's going to going to come out as people start to look at who this man is. But uh, regardless of his background and whether he did enough or or took the right approach in Argentina, he is the new pope, Pope Francis. And so there will begin a series of of events over the next. Uh, Really, over the next couple of weeks, as world leaders will make their way to the Vatican to meet with the leader of the Catholic Church, he will. Uh, there's a possibility that perhaps President Obama, when the president uh, visits the Middle East, might stop in Rome as part of this trip and pay homage to the new pope. So, a lot of interesting uh, things to happen. And by the way, we're going to be talking more about this throughout our show. We'll talk about the role of the Catholic Church. We'll talk about some of the activism to try to change the church from within. We've also got some pretty good segments coming up about the NCAA March Madness, which kicked off. you're watching this video clip we'll talk with perhaps dave zyron and some others so great show coming your way Cliff Schechter, alan rosenblatt the usual crew on take action news reminder you can always subscribe to our youtube channel take action news tv or sign up for our podcast through itunes or stitcher we're going to pause though in 15 seconds and let our syndicated stations catch up with us special thanks to all of them and to all of you listening over we act radio this is take action news we pause now in just a couple of seconds and let our syndicated stations 
catch up.